Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Alumni Field in Lowell for Ashland Legion Playoff Baseball. As tonight, 2-0 and oh, post-77 will take on Lowell. Lowell just defeated Medford before this game, so they continue to play on. If Ashland wins this game, they will advance to the state tournament. If Lowell wins this game, these two teams will meet up again as we are just about set for the first batter. Despite the fact we're at Alumni Field in Lowell, Ashland is the home team as they have the upper seed in the postseason. But of course, we needed a field with lights to get the double header in. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Lowell post-87 lineup. And leading things off is going to be Joey Sanchez, who is the center fielder. Batting second is, is Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder. Ray Velasquez, the second baseman, is batting third. Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop, is hitting cleanup. Thomas Hassett, the first baseman, batting fifth. Kyle DeRoma, the pitcher, batting sixth. Johnny Donovan, or excuse me, Kyle DeRoma is the catcher, batting sixth. Johnny Donovan, the pitcher, is batting seventh. Batting eighth is Zach Gishier, the left fielder, and the third baseman, Harrison Silva, batting ninth. As Dom Cavanaugh set to deliver to Joey Sanchez. Wind up and the pitch. And that one is just inside for the Ashland Post 77 defense. Let's send it to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Thank you, Tom. Nice evening in Lowell. Uh, playing third base is Lou Rossi, my favorite player. Uh, shortstop, Jackson Hornung. Second base, Cole Glassburn. First base, Zach Pesson. In left field, John Pesson, related. Brad Seymour in center field. The right field, Ben Thomas. Behind the plate, Sean Jewett catching Dominic Cavanaugh. That ball is right behind Silva. It's a ball. And make it a two and one count. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland Legion baseball. And we're also uh, running the camera tonight as well, so a little multitasking for us here in Lowell. They did not think they would get this game in due to expected rain in the area, but the forecast has lightened up, and it appears that there will be no rain as the first out of the game is Sean Jewett to Zach Pess in a 2-3 to three ground out for the center fielder, Joey Sanchez, and that will bring up Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder. I believe he's got a brother playing the game. He does. That would be Ray Velasquez, who will bat next. Followed by Thomas Hassett. It's certainly a bit of a humid evening here in Lowell. These teams battle to a 3-1 to one Ashland victory. Three or four games back. Ball two. Pitch just outside. Rain holding off, that's the important thing. The temperature reads 79, but it feels more like 84, 85. There is rain in the area we are keeping an eye on. We're just hoping that it'll pass us. And we've lucked out today. There's been a lot of rain throughout New England, but none of it has really hit Lowell. Well, that's because we're here. And we're at, we have a beautiful view from a actual press box. We certainly do. Is a very nice press box they have here at Alumni Field. As Kavanaugh is set to deliver. Wind up in the pitch. That one's fouled away. That was off. an accidental swing, I think. Just notice the only thing marked here for distance is a uh, right center field, 380 feet. That's a poke. Certainly is. On Sunday, Ashland defeated Natick 6-3, and then just yesterday took down Medford 6-4 to, to get to this point and have the upper hand here in the postseason. But of course, Lowell, very good, a very consistently good District 5 team, and they're certainly not going to make things easy here tonight. As the lights starting to come on here at Alumni Field. Wind up and the pitch. And it's a walk. To Velasquez, one out, one on. Ray Velasquez, the second baseman, will step in. If I remember correctly, Velasquez had decent speed. So 
certainly does. We'll see how Kavanaugh keeps him in check. He's certainly leaning in the direction of stealing. Slight lead off of first base. That pitch is just low. You're tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network consisting of HCAM in Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, as well as HCAT in Holliston. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad here at Alumni Field as the next pitch was low to Velasquez, 2-0. Luke Gustafson really had a battle yesterday to help take down Medford, but worked his way out of a couple jams to help Ashland with a 6-4 victory. Post-77, the only undefeated team left in the Zone 5 playoffs. And that pitch just inside, says the home plate umpire. Good crowd on hand as well, and I mentioned this is technically a home game for Ashland, but certainly a lot of Lowell fans in the building tonight. And the Lowell players are pretty chirpy. They get very loud. As Kavanaugh steps off the mound. Working from the stretch with a runner on first. And one out. And there's another walk, back-to-back -back walks. And will bring up Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop. This kid's a good athlete, Jimenez. Pro 77 handed Lowell their only loss during the regular season. So Lowell would love to get some revenge here and continue on to play tomorrow night. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Viewers at home can get to see the breaking pitches from our vantage point up here. At Ash Ashland Middle School, you can't. You can just see up or down. Cavanaugh deals, held his swing, one and one. Looked awful close from here. Certainly did. Ashland middle infielder's not holding the runner on. That pitch just outside. Dominic just hasn't found his spot yet. Post 77 was on a four game winning streak heading into this game. If Ashland should lose tonight, they play another game. Hope that doesn't have to get to that foul ball. That's fouled off, off to Pesson. And it's caught. Two away. Zach Pesson able to track it down. That'll bring up Tommy Hassett, the first baseman. I'm going to call him Tom, okay? Sounds good. All right. This season, Dom Cavanaugh has pitched well for post 77. He's thrown 12 innings, pitched in four games, started two, three and zero overall record, and a 2.33 ERA. The pitch just high, so he hasn't gotten a whole lot of start time for post 77. But down the stretch, showed that he is certainly reliable. Coach Johnson has confidence in him in this pivotal game. That ball's outside, throw down to second base. Not in time. Runner just back safe. Good throw, though, by Jewett. And he is a catcher that many have learned the hard way. You do not want to test. He loves his arm. Tom Cavanaugh from the stretch. Line up and the pitch. That's fouled off the backstop. I'm surprised Lowell hasn't tried to push things a little bit in the run game. That ball is outside. Two and one now. I think Dominic can feel confident that uh, he's got some really good defense behind him so he can pitch to contact if he wants to. Pitching and defense has been Ashland's stock and trade this year. It certainly has. Kavanaugh from the stretch, looks at second. Leg lift and the pitch. And another walk, bases loaded with two outs. 
Third walk of the inning for Cavanaugh. They'll bring up Kyle DeRoma, the catcher. Dominic not finishing, not getting his body squared up. That's why his balls are outside or inside to right-handed hitters. Not following through. See what happens going out of the full windup again. Line up and the pitch. That one up high, says the home plate umpire. We'll let the viewers uh, decide on that pitch. You'll get a groan from me. Well, a little crowd certainly liking it. Cavanaugh delivers, just low. Oh, I think you might have called that a strike. Late call there. Or he pointed to the Ashland dugout. I don't know. I wasn't sure what that was. We need a scoreboard operator here. Cavanaugh deals. And that one's high. We're not going to get any visual aid by the, with the umpire here. He's not showing us any fingers, so we'll have to guess on the count. Leg lift and the pitch. That's fouled off. Two and two. You think? We believe oh. that's the count. It's either uh, two and two or three and one. I'm not quite sure if that was a straight call a couple pitches ago. I'll go with the two and two. It's turned into a nice night for baseball here in Lowell. As this is hit in the air over to the right side, and it is caught for the third out of the inning. So despite walking the bases loaded, Cavanaugh gets out of the jam, and we will head to the bottom of the first. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Playoff Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Heading to the bottom of the first inning, a scoreless game between Ashland and Lowell. We're here in Lowell, but Ashland Post 77 is the home team as they have the upper hand in the playoffs, winning their first two games, the only undefeated team in the Zone 5 playoffs. Let's take a look at the Ashland Post 77 batting order. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, leading things off. John Pesson, the left fielder, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, batting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, hitting cleanup. Louis Rossi, the third baseman, hitting fifth. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting sixth. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, hitting seventh. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, hitting eighth. And Cole Glasper in the second baseman, hitting ninth. Four post 77 for the Lowell defense. We send it over to Larry Sacklad. Thanks, Tom. Playing third base tonight is Harrison Silva, 13 Anderson Jimenez at, short st at shortstop. Second base, Ray Velasquez. Playing first base, Tom Hassett. Left to right, Zach Gilshear. Center field, Joey Sanchez. Right field, Edgar Velasquez. Kyle DeRoma behind the plate, catching six foot five inch, 180 pound Johnny Donovan. It's Ben Thomas set to step in. Ben Thomas has been hitting the ball very well as of late, and he fouls that one away. Yesterday in the victory over Medford, he went one for two with a pair of walks and scored a couple runs. Just an average night for Ben Thomas. Certainly is. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, one and one. Heading into the week, Ben Thomas was batting a 434, 523 on base percentage, 509 slugging. Pretty impressive numbers. That pitch up high, two and one. Ben can hit to all fields with power, and he's a danger on the base paths. I'm sure Lowell has got the scouting report, and there's a base hit down the left field line. Thomas is going to round first, hit the pillow. Stand up single for Ben Thomas. Good way to start things off for post 77. That'll bring up John Pesson, the left fielder. Both the Pesson boys have been hitting of late. Zach more so than John, but any hit here is, is a good hit. 
John Peston was at a 217 heading into this game, but as you mentioned, Larry hitting a lot better as of late. Coach Johnson has the confidence with his bat in the two hole, at the very least to move a runner over like Ben Thomas. Johnny Donovan set to deliver. This is hit high in the air over to center field and it is caught. One away. Ben Thomas stays at first base. Jackson Horning will step into the batter's box. 380 feet to right center. That's Red Sox bullpen territory. I don't know what the distance behind the line is on the left field line, but it's gotta be 340 or so. Throw over to first, runner back safe. Ben Thomas, of course, a lot of speed, always a threat to steal. Let's see Donovan's move. There's a strike. Johnny Donovan working from the stretch. Line up and the pitch. That one a little bit low. Good block by the catcher, Kyle DeRoma. Let's see how far Ben Thomas can push it with Donovan. Throw over. Thomas back easily. Sometimes a runner can get in a pitcher's head. Bad things can happen. Well, post 77, of course, I'm sure was hoping. Oh, was, this one's going to get away from DeRoma. Picks it up and will not be able to get the throw off. Ben Thomas advances on the wild pitch. From our vantage, uh, vantage spot here, all these players look like little kids. Yeah, got the nice high up view tonight. Jackson Horning heading into the week was hitting a 389, 414 on base percentage. Takes a look at second and deals. Donovan delivers that one outside. Donovan still hasn't found his release point like Dominic Cavanaugh did in the first inning. So we'll see what happens when they both settle down. Donovan set to deliver. This is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the infield grass, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, they get the out. Advancing to third is Ben Thomas. Six to three on the out. Two away, Dom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, will step in. One has been snake bit in the last few games. Hasn't got his usual bunch of hits, he's had a few. Well, yesterday he was hit by a pitch and walked and flew out. Ellen Lowe, one and oh. Heading into the week, Dom Cavanaugh was batting a 350 with a 441 on base percentage. There's a strike. Donovan pitching out of the full windup. Thomas is gonna get a good lead down there just in case there's a pass ball or a wild pitch. Ellen Lowe, two and one. He's like the road runner, Ben Thomas, right? That's right. It always gets dirty. It's the dirtiest uniform I've ever seen after every single game. That is fouled away. That's towards the Ashland bench. That Duck for cover over there. Ooh. That was a missile. Two and two count now. That was an I'm just protecting sort of swing. The well, scenario yesterday was since Ashland was the only undefeated team left, they would advance to the States if they weren't able to get tonight's game. And as Dom Cavanaugh is hit, he will advance to first. First and third, two outs. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, will step in. As I've said many times before, he's got the green light to bunt. Yeah, two outs, I don't know if they'll take that risk. Well, Lowell's sniffing something out in the Lowell third baseman. Lewis Rossi was at a 240 heading into the week, 345 on base percentage. He went one for three yesterday as that pitch up high. Ben Thomas can get a little bit more of a greedy lead over there because Donovan is not going to pick over. Rossi had an RBI single in yesterday's game against Medford. That pitch just outside. 
That was part of the four run bottom of the third for Ashland in yesterday's six to four victory over Medford. Wind up and the pitch, fouled into the backstop. Two and one. Lewis Rossi, the hitter, and Ben Thomas at third, heading off to UMass Amherst. They're excited about that. A late time call there by Rossi. Dom Cavanaugh and Brad Seymour will be heading out that way too, along with Dylan O'Leary, the bat boy tonight. Wind up and the pitch. That one inside, three and one. So some struggles from both starters here in the first inning from Dom Cavanaugh and Johnny Donovan. Dom Cavanaugh got out of the top of the first unharmed. After the bases loaded up, we'll see if uh, that'll happen here as Rossi draws the walk and the bases are loaded for post 77. Sean Jew with the catcher to step in, but first we're gonna have a discussion on the mound as the Lowell coach will come out to talk to his pitcher, settle him down a little bit. A little early for that, don't you think? Give him a little bit more leash. Well, Sean Jewett really has to be patient. He's been very anxious at the plate, swinging at the first pitch. He's a good hitter. So if he's patient, he'll be able to square one up. Certainly will as the umpire breaks up the discussion. Including playoff wins, or playoff games I should say. Lowell is 17 and two overall. The only loss during the regular season was from post 77. Ashland overall 16 and four. Medford finishes their season 11 and 10 overall. Natick finishes 11 and nine. Wind up and the pitch. That one is just outside as the catcher had to block it up. He's had a lot of action behind the plate to Roma. Certainly has. Base hit here will plate two. Ooh, there. another one that's going to get by the catcher, and the runner from third is going to come home and score. It's 1-0 post-77. All runners advance. And Thomas scores the first run for post-77. Kavanaugh advances to third. Rossi to second. Nothing to Roma could do with that. That was just spiked. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs. Now Donovan's working up his pitch count. Certainly is. He's getting a little razzing from the Ashland dugout. And that's gonna be a walk for Sean Jewett. A four pitch walk. And the bases are now reloaded. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, will step in. What we don't know is who's available for Lowell to pitch and who's not, given the fact that they've had two games this week. Yeah, it's always tough when you have to play out of the loser's bracket. There's a strike. Now, Zach Peston has been killing the ball. He had a triple last night. That's Bottle a piece back. of this one, and it is hit in the air above the first baseman who will make the catch. The post-77 does play to run. It's 1-0 Ashland as we head to the top of the second on HCAM and WACA-TV. Set for the top of the second inning, a 1-0 lead for Ashland post-77. Stepping into the batter's box is the Lowell pitcher, Johnny Donovan. Seven, well, eight, and nine for Lowell. Johnny Donovan, Zach Gishier, and Harrison Silva. Well, Dom Cavanaugh can't complain about uh, not having a good strike zone to work with with a six foot five Cavanaugh, uh, Donovan, excuse me. Cavanaugh hoping for some better luck this inning. Get out of it throwing a few less pitches. Swing and a miss there, 0 and 1. It's kind of a timid swing from the six foot five right handed hitter. Wind up and the pitch. Breaking pitch upstairs. One and one. Did a pretty good break on it. On, 
Set to deliver. That one just low, two and one. He gave him the strike. Ooh. Late strike call. Very late strike call, one and two. I wish we had umpire cha-cha-cha, but we don't tonight. He's, he's a little deceptive. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Out number one. Dominic, uh, Dominic Cavanaugh made Donovan look really, really feeble. Well, Cavanaugh has been known to struggle a little bit in the first inning of his starts, but then settle down a bit. Yeah, I think I read about that. Zach Gishier at the plate, swing and a miss. It's really the first five hitters you got to worry about on low. Oh, and one count. Set to deliver. That one is just outside. I think Kavanaugh's feeling a little bit more comfortable mixing in his pitches now. Leg lift and the pitch. That one low. Two I, and one. I did hear the umpire say ball. Very, very softly. Well, some umpires are soft spoken. Don't they know who's up broadcasting? <laughs> Line up and the pitch. This is hit in the air, right side foul territory and caught by Zach Pesson, two away. Hot Dog Pesson has been making some plays so far. Harrison Silva, the third baseman, will step in. Two outs here in the top of the second. Tom Cavanaugh set to deliver. Strike called. Wow. 0 and 1. He got blocked out there. Sorry, the pole blocked his fingers of the way. Line up and the pitch. It's a strike. There's another strike call, 0 and 2. He's flipping you the finger, Tom. <laughs> Two fingers he uses. Just a wave of the arm, really, as this is up the middle, and it's gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Four to three for out number three, and it is a one nothing Ashland post seventy seven lead as we head to the bottom of the second on H Cam and WACA TV. Bottom of the second inning, a one nothing lead for Ashland post seventy seven. Stepping in the batter's box now, it is Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Eighth hitter in the lineup, 8 9 and 1 coming up. Line up and the pitch. Just low. Tom Cavanaugh had some struggles in the first inning pitching for post 77, but cruised through the second. There's a strike, 1 and 1. Wish he'd make up his mind which way he turns. Brad Seymour, Cole Glassburn, Ben Thomas do up four post 77. Just outside. Oh, call that a strike on you. Okay. He's killing you. So I don't know whether the previous one was a ball. I believe it's one and two now. Yeah! There's strike three. Got him looking. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, will step in at a Hopkinton High School. I spoke to him before the game. I told him he better get a hit today or I'm going to call Coach Simos tomorrow morning. He walked and scored a run yesterday. I believe that was a strike 0-1. I don't think so. But he reached out the hand. I don't know what he was, <laughs> the umpire was doing there. 1-1. One one. Cole's got very good power, and he's been – Hitting the gaps lately, left and right field gap. Swing and a miss. One and two is the count. Johnny Donovan working pretty quickly this inning. That one outside. Very outside. So the implications here tonight, in case you missed it earlier, is if Ashland wins, they advance to the state tournament. Lowell wins, we play another night. Lowell versus Ashland, and the winner of that game will advance 
to the state tournament as Glassburn fouls that one away. Count remains two and two. Just in case a ball is going to come through that press box window, I'll yell duck, okay? Sounds good. All right. Line up and the pitch. I got a piece of that one to stay alive. Cole really has to just stay within himself and not try to do too much. Well, he's become the trusted second baseman for post 77. Gets a piece of this one over to center field and it is caught. Two away. Nice catch by Joey Sanchez. The human wrecking ball is coming up to the plate. Ben Thomas singled in the first inning and scored the only run of the game. Ended up scoring on a wild pitch. I don't know why they called that a strike on the outside corner of the ball. I believe it was a ball. Can't be too sure though, as this is hit in the air, fouled up the left side. I don't even think the umpire's given a count today. Well. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit in the air in foul territory up the left side and it is caught. A good catch by the right fielder. And that is the third out of the bottom of the second. We will head to the top of the third. It's 1-0 post-77 on HKM and WACA-TV. Top of the third inning, top of the order for Lowell post-87. Tom Cavanaugh hoping for the same kind of luck he had in the second. We got Joey Sanchez and the Velasquez brothers. Yep. Joey Sanchez, the center fielder. Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder. And Ray Velasquez, the second baseman. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Joey Sanchez grounded out in his only at bat so far in this game. Lined up and the pitch. Just outside, 1 and 1. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit in the air, high in the air, over to left field, and it is caught for out number one. Young man, you were born with two hands. I suggest you use them. You don't want to have an oopsie out there. We'll bring up Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder. I think he walked in the first inning, did he not? He did indeed. Bases were loaded in the first inning for Lowell, but Kavanaugh was able to get out of it with no harm. Nasty breaking pitch there, four strike one. Very good movement on that pitch. Oh, one pitch. This is hit in the air above us, and it is going to be 0 and 2. That came right to the back of the stands. You didn't hear me say duck, did you? I didn't. Because I want to do the game by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Be a game of knockout here. Well, we know you can handle it. Well, yeah. The 0-2. This Jump. is up the oh. left side, and it is dropped by Ross. He picked up by the shortstop throw over, not in time. Edgar Velasquez reaches on the error, and that'll bring up Ray Velasquez, the second baseman. Yeah, it took a tough hop for Rossi, but usually he makes that play. Oh, you're a little tough on him. I think that ball was hitting the, hitting the hole. May have been tough to get Velasquez, but I'll go with what you say. E5. Well, we'll have to ask the official scorekeeper. Tom Cavanaugh from the stretch. That one down low. Ray Velasquez, the second baseman at bat. His brother Edgar on first base. Set to deliver. Inside. 
Sean Jewett may have some rabbit ears tonight. He's looking over at the Lowell dugout. Maybe they're saying some things that he doesn't particularly like. Slight lead over at first base. This is hit up the left side. That's going to get down for a base hit. Edgar Velasquez is going to stay at second base, so it'll be first and second with one out. That'll bring up Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop. Two on, one out for Lowell. Big opportunity here. See what Kavanaugh can do here with two on, one out. Nice breaking pitch. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. <laughs> Kavanaugh has worked out a one jam today. Let's see if he can work out another. Inside. One and one. If you want to see working out of a jam, go to last night's game. Luke Gustafson getting out of a bases loaded jam in the fifth inning. That was a piece of work. Pitch is he called ball, although uh, the hitter check swung there. That looked like a strike though to me. Two and one. I'm not even going to get into it with you. <laughs> trying to get you fired up, Larry. Oh. <laughs> Leg left and the pitch. Allen low. Three and one. Well, Dom has got to induce some contact here or pour a couple of strikes over. Line up and the pitch, both runners taking off and the pitch was low anyway, so that's ball four and we'll load up the bases with one out. Edgar Velasquez up to third, Ray up to second and Anderson Jimenez to first. Thomas Hassett, the fifth hitter in the lineup and the first baseman will step into the batter's box. I believe he's the only lefty in tonight's lineup. No, I think uh, Sanchez is the lefty. Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Dominic more of a control pitcher, not the power type guy. Can work inside and outside. There's a ball inside. One and one. You're tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball Playoffs on HCAM in Hopkinton, WACA TV in Ashland, or HCAT in Holliston. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air in foul territory up the left side, and it is caught. And now the runner from third going to tag the throw home in time, and they get him. And that is going to end the inning. How about that? Lewis Rossi. Wow, Lewis Rossi, the play of the day there. Makes the catch on the fly ball. Throws it home to Jewett. Five to two on the third out. That might be the best play of the entire season. That certainly was. I was begging for him to drop that ball because I knew the runner was going to tag. There's a, lot, there's a lot of ways to get out of a jam. That is one that I never really thought I would see. My Unbelievable. New My new idol. We will head to the bottom of the third. It's 1-0 post-77 leading on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning, a 1-0 post-77 lead after an outstanding play by third baseman Lewis Rossi. Inning ended up Ending in a double play as John Pesson took ball one. 
Line up and the pitch inside. Lewis Rossi ran to his right to make the catch in foul territory. And then the runner from third tried to tag. And a perfect throw to Jewett at home plate to get the runner who tagged from third. His energy is just contagious. So if any of his teammates are going to slack off, they better think about how hard Lewis Rossi works. Swing and a miss. Three and one is the count. This field is cavernous, Tom. And he reached for that one. That's strike three. And the fire down to first, no problem. So John Pesson goes down via the strikeout. A little ugly language coming out of the Lowell dugout. That'll bring up Jackson Horning, the shortstop. And we've been talking about it all game long. Of course, the uh, home plate umpire, pretty good strike zone, but not really uh, making a big move on his calls as this one is fouled up the left side. Oh. I thought it went over the bag fair. Sometimes certainly tough to tell if it's a uh, striker ball with the home plate umpire. Horning grounded out and is only at bat so far in this game. That one low and the catcher lost it, but no one on base. Jackson is really, really due. Certainly is. Lined up and the pitch, outside. A walk is as good as a hit right here. Another outside pitch, three and one. Warning came into the week hitting a 389, 414 on base percentage, 630 slugging. And that's ball four. Nice job. He had a home run against Natick, I think. He did. That was his second home run of the year, first in, at Ashland Middle School. As Dom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, will step in. Mano a mano here. See what Donovan can, Donovan can do with Cavanaugh. Horning always a threat to steal. Outside there, 1-0. Looks like we might have some warm-up action starting for Lowell. That's all right. That's okay. Another outside pitch. You know, Donovan hasn't thrown over yet, so I'm wondering whether they can let Jackson get a little bit more of a greedy lead and push Donovan. Well, he has thrown over a couple of times, but they've been weak pickoff throws. Kyle DeRoma, the catcher, going to come out and talk to his pitcher, try to settle him down. Of course, with this being an elimination game, can't really mess around too much here. Set to deliver. Swing and a miss. Two and one on Cavanaugh. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. No, Ooh. I don't think so. The umpire says nope. Another late strike call. Two and two. Checking at first. Runner just back safe. Wide up and the pitch. And that one's going to get by the catcher. Jackson Horning going to try to advance, and he will easily. Wild pitch allows Horning to advance in a scoring position. He'll also fill up the count. Jerome has been doing a lot of work behind the plate with Donovan, blocking balls. Time called by the hitter. Donovan working from the stretch. 
Outside, and that is ball four. First and second with one out. Coach is going to have a little talking to his young man on the mound. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, set to step in. Had a tremendous, what could be a game-saving play in the top of the third to end the inning. It was bases loaded, one out. Rossi caught it in foul territory. Runner at third try to tag, and Rossi gunned him down at home plate. A beauty of a throw to Sean Jewett. All nominated for play of the season. I certainly agree. That was the craziest double play I've ever seen. As Lewis Rossi hoping to do some damage with the bat here. This field is playing like the Oakland Coliseum. Lots of foul territory, and Lou Rossi used up every bit of it. He's hitting a 240 coming into this week. Takes that one low. Lefty steps back in. Pulls back the bunt. Two and oh. Well, what he was doing there, he was trying to draw in the third baseman. Possibly if Donovan spiked one. Horning could have grabbed third base. Runners on first and second with one out. Wind up and the pitch inside. Three and oh. Lou plays his own game. He's not out there to hit home runs. Just out there to do his job. Ball four. And the bases are loaded with one out. Third time tonight, post 77 has loaded up the bases. That's gonna be it for Donovan. Yeah, it looks like they might pull him. Can't mess around here. Sean Jewett, the catcher, do up next. Bases loaded, one out. And we're gonna have a new pitcher for Lowell post 87. That's going to be I don't know, I think, right? Yeah. John Donovan gets a nice applause from the hometown crowd. We'll take a quick time out. You're tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland and HCAM in Hopkinton. <laughs> Continuing on in the bottom of the third inning, new pitcher for Lowell. Chris Ward is out there to take over. As Sean Jewett, the catcher, steps in. Time called by the hitter. One nothing lead for post 77, but they are threatening here with one out and the bases loaded. That pitch just high. He's dropping down to the side, way under three quarter. Almost sidearm. Well, halfway between, in between. That's a little difficult to pick up. That one's going to get by the catcher. All the runners going to advance, and another post-77 run is going to score. It's a 2-0 game. Jackson Hornung comes around. Up to third is Dom Cavanaugh. Lewis Rossi moves up to second. Post-77 certainly liking that. Now Lowell's going to play the infield in. They can't afford to give up any type of runs here. Ward from the stretch. Outside. It's going to be another tough assignment for Daroma. Post 77 has two on, one out. A run in here in this third. Two nothing lead, swing and a miss. Johnny Donovan went two and a third. Is charged with the run that just scored. When this kid throws from the side like this, any outside pitch, Daroma's going to have to get it. It's inside. That pitch is inside. It's more likely on an outside pitch to tip off his glove, head towards the first base dugout. 3 1 count. The benefit of going from the side, righties will bail. 
Get some swinging, out number two, and that'll bring up Zach Peston. Left fielder's playing really deep on Zach Pesson. Maybe he got the report. This is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the grass. The throw to first is in time. Four to three for out number three, but post 77 does play to run. It is two to nothing, Ashland leading Lowell as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM and WACA TV. Heading to the top of the fourth inning, a two nothing lead for post 77 as they played another run in the bottom of the third. Two up for Lowell is six, seven, and eight. Kyle DeRoma, Johnny Donovan, and Zach Gishier. I think the temperature's gone up like four degrees. You said it was 88, now it's 92. Yeah, Very humid. It is booth. certainly humid. And uh, nobody knows this, but we have an air conditioner behind us, but we're not allowed to turn it on. Well, we need the windows open, so can't have the AC running. Got to give something to get something, I guess. Kavanaugh got out of quite the jam last inning as this one's hit in the air, and that's going to drop into center field. A leadoff single for DeRoma. Johnny Donovan, the pitcher, will step in. Christopher Ward. Oh, that's right. Chris Ward's going to step in for him. Chris Ward took over last inning to get Lowell out of a jam. He's sporting a lot of moss, as Dennis Eccleston would say. Wind up and the pitch. Bunt. And I don't know if he pulled that back in time, but that's going to get away from Jewett and allow DeRoma to advance the second. No intent there, no head hunting. I guess you'll have to call that a pass ball. Or you oh. call it a wild pitch. I'd call wild it a wild pitch. pitch. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. It was really inside. And there wasn't going to be a facial there, but it was awful close. I think that should have been a strike, though. He didn't pull back the bunt. Well, another bunt. That's bunted back into the backstop. One and one. It was kind of a poorly executed bunt. So I don't know whether he's got nothing in his stick. They just want to move the runner over. Wind up and the pitch. There's a bunt, and that is foul. Well, that's the end of his bunting. One and two. You bunt the foul, ball foul on, uh, when you have two strikes. Strikeout. Runner on second, no outs for Lowell. Fouled away. Just got the knob of his bat on that one. So I should say if you bunt you have two strikes and the ball goes foul, you're out. Pitcher gets credited with the strikeout. Tavin off from the stretch. Bunt, and that is strike three. Nope. No, I don't understand that. No, the ball was way high. Yeah, but he held the bunt out. Self-preservation, my man. He's got a big, wide open stance at the plate. So he gets a pretty good view. Oh, now he's close. Now there's his stance is open up now. Kavanaugh doesn't want to lose this kid. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike three. One away. Zach Gishier, the center fielder, will step in. Working from the stretch. Gets a piece of this one, takes a couple hops on the infield grass, gloved by Glasper, and throw to first, no problem. Four to three on the out. DeRoma does advance to third. Two outs in the inning. Harrison Silva, the third baseman, will step in. Well, post 77 has had a battle through these playoffs. And so far they're 2-0, oh, but the wins certainly haven't come easy. And this one is 
Not going to either. You don't ever want to let the nine hitter on on the bases. He's hitting nine for a reason. Cavanaugh from the stretch. This is hit in the air over to center field and caught by Brad Seymour for the third and final out of the top of the fourth. We will head to the bottom of the inning. Home team Ashland leading two to nothing here in Lowell on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. <laughs> Continuing on to the bottom of the fourth inning, post 77 coming back to the plate. Eight, nine, and one do up. Brad Seymour, Cole Glassburn, and Ben Thomas. Out for his second inning of work on the mound, it's Chris Ward. Wind up and the pitch inside. Post 77 scored a run in the first and in the third inning. And we are in Lowell, but Post 77 is the home team with the higher seed in the playoffs after winning their first two games. A swing and a miss there for Seymour, one and one. Very nice facility here in Lowell at Alumni Field. A pitch inside. Two and one. I don't know. I think he showed the. <laughs> showed I don't the know finger. what the umpire is doing. I'm just guessing here. All right. Well, thought he got the home, that the home plate umpire is essentially motionless with his ball and strike calls. Falls that one away. We know one thing. There is two strikes on him. Well, that's true. Is that a reasonable deduction on your part, or just <laughs> just <laughs> observing things? Ward deals, and that one's fouled up the right side and out of play. Seymour's had a difficult time offensively this year compared to last year, but he can still go get him in center field. He covers a lot of territory. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. There's out number one. Cole Glassburn will step in. See what Ward does with the lefty Glassburn. See what his pitches look like. He'll be riding in on his hands, but Cole Glassburn's got an open stance, so. Outside. Ward doesn't want to jerk the ball or end up hitting Glassburn. Set to deliver. Swing and a miss. One and one. They're shading Glassburn towards left field. He's got a big gap right center. Bunted foul. Should have dropped the bat and ran away. One and two. Not a chance that ball would have been in play. Glassburn flew out to center field and is only at bat in the second inning. Swing and a miss. Two straight strikeouts for Chris Ward. They'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder and leadoff man. Chris Ward has provided some nice relief for Johnny Donovan who struggled through the first two and a third. One outside, one and oh. Lowell's playing B Tom almost close to straight away. Up high. Two and oh. There's a strike. It's two and one now on Ben Thomas. If he hits a gap, he can run all night. Stop, 
outside. Beautiful infield here, Tom. It's not like uh, the 77's home field, which is haunted. It's good for two or three hours a game. That pitch is up high, and Ben Thomas draws the two-out walk. John Pess and the left fielder will step in. First two outs. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. John Pesson 0 for 2 at the plate today. Ward working from the stretch with Thomas on first. He delivers, and that is fouled away. Oh, and two. Thomas was swiping that bag. Gets the bad news that it was a foul ball. He's got to return. Ben Thomas scored the first of two post-77 runs. All the way back in the bottom of the first. Wind up and the pitch, Thomas taking off again. This one's hit in the air, over to shallow right field. Could be trouble, and it is caught. As Edgar Velasquez is able to cover some good ground to make the catch. And that is going to be the, th the third out of the bottom of the fourth to the top of the fifth we go. Ashland leading Lowell two to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fifth inning. Top of the order for Lowell Post 87. A 2-0 lead for Ashland. Post 77 was able to play to run in the bottom of the first as well as the bottom of the third. Joey Sanchez, Edgar Velasquez, and Ray Velasquez do up. Tom Cavanaugh out there for another inning of work. He's ran into a few jams, but he has found ways out of them. Not always the most conventional ways, but... Getting out of the jam, of course, that's the most important thing as this is hit in the air, fouled up the left side out of the reach of John, John Pesson. Based on what, we, based on at least what I've seen so far, I don't know how Lowell's won 17 games this year with their offense. It's most like tonight. Well, it's still got a few innings left to play. The post-77 defense, can't say enough good things about them. All well, they've really had tonight, except for the Rossi play, has been some routine grounders. There's a ground ball to Rossi at third base. Picks it up, throws over to Pesson. Get runners out. One down. Five to three for the out. Edgar Velasquez, the right fielder, will step in. I mean, they're just weak. They're not hitting bombs or anything. There's nothing. I'm not as scared of any of them. Little Velasquez or Big Velasquez or <laughs> Anderson Jimenez. Nobody. Well, they did just play a, b a game before this as uh, well. It tires you out, doesn't it? 1-0. Oh. Doesn't tire me out just sitting here watching. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's uh, the disadvantage you get if you're not the leading team in the postseason or the undefeated team in the postseason. If you go to that loser's bracket, you got to play a double header to continue on to the game five. I think he just took a strike. A 1-1. One, one. Two and one. That pitch inside. Breaking ball that didn't break. Coach Johnson's got uh, Shane Leary as a weapon. It's a swinging strike. Two and two. Right on three, He's also got Ben Fink. If he needs a replacement for Dom. They certainly have the depth. Line up and the pitch. This is hit in the air over to left center. That's going to get down for a base hit. A one out single for Velasquez, and that'll bring up Ray Velasquez. Edgar Velasquez having a pretty good night. He's reached on a walk, an error, and a single. Ray 
Ray Velasquez stepping in now. He's walked and singled so far. Let's see if Lowell will try and get the run game going. Checking at first, runner back safe. Well, I think Lowell knows that they're gonna have to manufacture a run against this pitching and defense. Time called by the hitter. Having off from the stretch. He deals. This is up the left side. Glove by Rossi. Throw to second for one. It pulls the second baseman off the bag, so he's not able to get the throw off, but they do get the lead runner. So nice play by Cole Glassburn. He was going to get train wrecked. He came down with the ball and touched the bag. Couldn't, couldn't turn it for a double play, but got the lead runner anyway. It certainly was. Ray Velasquez reaches on the 6-4 to four force out. That'll bring up Anderson Jimenez, the shortstop. Cavanaugh from the stretch. That one's low. Runner takes off from first. The throw to second, not in time. Decent speed for a big kid. Certainly was. Beat a throw from Jewett. That's not easy. Stolen base for Ray Velasquez. Two outs, runner on second. Cavanaugh turns around to check on second. Runner's back. Velasquez must be just stocky. 5'10, 175. Looks bigger than that. It's a strike. Delayed. Cole Glassburn just holding Velasquez close. There's a foul ball. One and two. The only real trouble that uh, Kavanaugh's got into was uh, the first inning in that play that Lou Rossi made, the double play. Kavanaugh set to deal, breaking pitch up high, two and two. One on, two outs. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled into the backstop. You know, it's one thing to uh, cheer on your teammates from the dugout and chirp and that kind of stuff, but chirping at the opposition, calling, on, calling out their numbers, etc. cetera, is not so hot in my book. Swing and a miss, and that is out number three for the top half of the fifth. To the bottom of the inning we go. Post 77 leading Lowell 2 to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the fifth inning, a 2 nothing post 77 lead is stepping into the batter's box as Jackson Hornan. 3 4 and 5 for post 77. First pitch called strike, or barely called strike, I should say. Yeah. The left fielder is playing out in some other zip code. Playing Jackson Horn deep. Hit in the air over to right center, and that is going to drop for a base hit. Hornung around first, heading over to second, and the throw in is cut off, and it's a stand up double for Jackson Hornung. Well, you said it, Larry. He's overdue, wow. and there it is. Now, Dom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, will step in. I thought as soon as that ball got down, he was going to head for three bags. But wise choice. He might get over to third base with a wild pitch or pass ball. Wind up in the pitch. That one down low. You promised me a mosquito free night, Tom, so you owe me. I did no such thing, especially on a human night like tonight. That pitch inside and <laughs> Kavanaugh was just standing there hoping that would hit him. Wear it, as they say, baseball parlance.
time called. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled into the backstop, two and one. Kavanaugh struck out his last time, I think. He actually uh, was hit by a pitch and walked so far today. Oh, my bad. My bad. Sorry, Dom. Wind up and the pitch. Breaking pitch with a lot of movement, but it moved too far outside. Jackson Hornung playing a little head game with the catcher. He took off, or looked like he was taken off, for third base. Ward set to deliver. There's warm-up action for Lowell. Hornung with a big lead off of second base. I think he's having some fun with Ray Velasquez out there. I mean, Velasquez came from his spot where he is right now all the way to the bag. Hornung didn't move. So Ward just backs off the rubber. <laughs> now so, you know, it's getting in the pitcher's head, too. It's both 77 teammates just told him to go back. And the pitcher took a long look at him. Swing and a miss. And that is going to be a strikeout. Out number one, Lewis Rossi will step in. He has walked twice today. He is not an easy hitter to pitch to, that's for sure. Because he's a pest. Certainly is. I still can't get over that defensive play he made. That was unreal. One I was count. praying. I was praying for him to drop the ball. I never thought if he caught it, he could throw the runner out. That was back in the top of the third. Rossi caught it in foul territory, and then gunned down the runner, tagging from third at home. And warm up action for Lowell. The ball outside. Two and oh on Rossi. He's walked twice so far today. Will he walk again? What we have here down at this field, alumni field, is actual bullpens with rubbers and mounds. Not a pile of dirt and a wooden block. Ashland Park and Rec, if you're listening. 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. Rossi not happy with himself there. Looked like he was caught in between. Ward takes a look at this. second and steps off. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashton Legion playoff baseball. Is that pitch outside? Way outside, three and one. Hornung's having a good time out there at second base. Jimenez and Velasquez are each trying there. That pitch is going to fill up the count. Check. No real straight call from the umpire, but Yes, the infield umpire for his opinion, and he gave the safe sign, so. Is it just me, or is there a little rain falling out there, perhaps? Oh, and they get him looking. I don't know about that call. That was inside, but that's out number two. Lou Rossi doesn't know about that call either. Sean Jewett will step in. It was a good breaking pitch from Ward, but looks a little too inside to me. Jewett can make his teammates happy with a little base hit. I believe that was a strike, 0-1. I agree. Ward does have some very good movement on his pitches, I must say. It's tough for a hitter to pick up. He goes right behind his back like that. There's another strike. 0-2. Strike called by the most unenthusiastic home plate umpire of all time. Of all time. <laughs> I mean, we're going back to the Civil War days. Oh, yeah. There's never been a more 
unenthusiastic umpire. I, I would agree with that. Checking at second and a runner back safe. Corning trying to get in the pitcher's head. Only bad things can happen when you try to pick a runner off at second base. Rarely does it ever work, and if you throw it away, well, this goes horn on. He's taken off, and that one's fouled away. He'll have to go back, 0-2. Halfway around third base, got the news, or heard the news. Sean's in a hole. 2-0 lead for Ashland here in the bottom of the fifth inning. At Alumni Field in Lowell. Pro 77, the home team, due to winning the first two playoff games. If Ashland wins here, they advance to the States as that one's fouled away. And if they lose, we play tomorrow. They don't lose many balls down here, Tom. They certainly don't. Got some netting. Looks they have the press box here. It's a beautiful facility. I'm enjoying it very much. Well, we can sleep here. <laughs> well, if they play tomorrow, that's a possibility. They'll pitch up high, one and two. What time do you like to get woken up? Noon. Okay, noon. Noon it is. Horning going to go. He's going to go again, yep. And swing and a miss. That's out number three. So it's three strikeouts in the inning for Chris Ward. Pretty impressive. And the score will remain two to nothing as we head to the top of the sixth on HCAM and WACA TV. Continuing on to the top of the sixth, the two nothing lead for post 77. We'll down to their final six outs, but you can't imagine those are going to be an easy six outs to get if you're. Post 77, this little lineup can certainly be dangerous at times, but Dom Cavanaugh has kept them at bay and has pitched a gem so far. Five, six, and seven coming up for Lowell. Tommy Hassett, Kyle DeRoma, and Chris Ward. Wind up and the pitch, and this is driven up the middle. That'll trickle into center field, and that's going to be a leadoff single. Tommy Hassett reaches for his second time today. He walked in the first. Now he's one for two on the day. Kyle DeRoma, the catcher, will step in. We'll have to keep an eye on if post 77 gets any warm up action going. If Tom Cavanaugh begins to run, in any, run into any trouble. Never really any good to let the leadoff man on. Cavanaugh working from the stretch. And this is hit in the air past the reach of the second baseman, Glassburn, and it's two on with no outs. Runners on first and second, no outs. Chris Ward stepping in, and actually it looks like we might have a pinch hitter for Ward. I think they're reinserting Donovan, looks like. They are, Johnny Donovan's gonna step in and reclaim his spot in the batting order. Ooh, that hit him. Base is loaded. Trouble brewing for post 77. As Zach Gishier, the center fielder, will step in. Maybe a mound visit is in order. And some warm up activity. Shane Leary. They will indeed get Leary going. They're bringing the infield in, but I see an umbrella. Yeah, it is raining a little bit out there, believe it or not. Doesn't look like it from in here, really, but there is some rain falling. Jake Obid making a trip to the mound to talk to his former teammate, Dom Cavanaugh. The only way I could notice the rain before, Larry, was just looking at that puddle over there, having drops of water fall into it as we get a mound visit here. Well, you did tell me you were very much into nature, so that makes sense. It's very true. Two up next for Lowell is Zach Gishier, the center fielder. He's 0 for 2 on the day. But it's bases loaded for Lowell and no outs here in the sixth inning. There's some 
Rainstorms in the area. Nothing looks serious at this moment. Infield in all the way around. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. One and oh count on Gishier. Another low pitch, two and oh. Roll bench making some noise. As usual. As long as they're cheering for their own guys, I don't mind. Line up and the pitch. Three and O. Oh. Just low, says the home plate umpire. I didn't hear him say anything. <laughs> well, he didn't make any kind of motion with his hand, so we assume it was a ball. So if Dom walks his hitter, you'll see the lower side erupt. And he does. That's going to score a run for Lowell. A two to one game. Thomas Hassett comes around to score, and that'll bring up Harrison Silva, the third baseman. And we'll have another uh, mound visit as catcher Sean Jewett will try to give Dom Cavanaugh some words of confidence. Rain falling at a light pace here in Lowell. A two to one Ashland lead. The bases remain loaded for Lowell with no outs. Certainly not the situation you want right now. He's in the pressure cooker right now. Jackson Horning buying some time. Lowell bench is getting on somebody. Cavanaugh deals up high. He's having trouble finding the strike zone right now. Ashley and the home team. Another low. Oh, there we go. Strike. One one. You ever heard the expression, don't count your chickens? I forgot way. you have to wait a couple minutes for right, the call. Just like this umpire. Strike two. Swing and a miss. If he works out of this jam, that'll resemble. You need a strike on a double play here. Gustafson's get out of jail. Fifth inning. And it's strike three, a swing and a miss. Out number one. The bases remain loaded for Lowell. Joey Sanchez stepping in. I think the outfielder's got to play in a little bit. Doesn't look like Sanchez will. He's got the brute power to hit it over their heads. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside, 1-0. 2-1 oh. lead for Ashland. A run in here in this sixth inning for Lowell. One out, base is loaded as this is fouled away. One and one on Sanchez. Edgar Velasquez waiting on deck. Sanchez is 0 for 3 today so far. Kavanaugh working out of the full windup. And this is up the middle, takes a hop, glove that short, flipped a second 4-1, and that's all they'll get. We're tied at two. Sanchez reaches on the force out, but it's a sacrifice force out. And an RBI for Joey Sanchez as Kyle DeRoma comes around to score. I don't think uh, even if Glassburn had pivoted and thrown, he would have got Sanchez 
and Jackson Horning had a chance to go home with it, but it was slowly hit. So I think he thought, well, why not get a sure out here? That leaves runners on first and third, and may see the runner take off. Two to two game as this is hit in the air over to center field. Seymour under it and makes the catch for the third out, but Lowell has tied this game up at two apiece. We head to the bottom of the six. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Playoff Baseball on WACA TV and HCAN. Heading into the bottom of the sixth inning, a two to two ball game. Zach Pesson stepping in, 70 and nine, do up for post 77. Zach Pesson, Brad Seymour, and Cole Glassburn. We have a new pitcher for Lowell, their third of the game. Sean Nugent is out there to take over for Chris Ward. Ward came in in relief of Johnny Donovan, went two and two thirds, giving up a hit, no runs. Walk two and struck out five. But now Sean Nugent taking over. And pitch down low, one and oh. Well, you wonder what the reasoning is for taking out Ward. I mean, all, clearly they wanted a pinch hit for him. But that had to be a tough decision with how well he was pitching in relief. Was that a ball or a strike? I believe it was a strike since mm. he turned to the side. So we'll say it's a one and one count for now. Wind up and the pitch. Another strike, it appears. One and two. Uh, that, no. I don't believe that was a strike. Viewers at home can be the judge. Well, I don't think it was either, but the umpire's been kind of making that motion when it is a strike. Nugent delivers, swing and a miss, and that is out number one. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, will step in. We are tied up here at two after Lowell plates two runs in the top of the sixth. Post 77 trying to get their bats going. Inside, almost hit him, 1-0. Brad Seymour 0 for 2 on the day so far. Zach's been killing the ball of late. Fouled into the backstop there. set to deliver. That one is outside. Sean Nugent, a six foot, 190 pound righty at a Drake at high school. Graduated 2017. It's his last year. This is hit high in the air over to shallow right field. And it's dropped by the first baseman. Seymour reaches on the error. Pass it should have peeled off and let the right fielder grab it. Backpedaling like that is always dangerous. Cole Glassburn will step into the batter's box with one on, one out. Still an ugly hit there, but need base runners. Well, this is the kind of situation you gotta take advantage of. Third baseman playing in on the cut of the grass, trying to take away any bunt that Cole Glassburn made to lay down. That's fouled away. Cole showed no, no signs of bunting. Nugent deals, swing and a miss, 0-2. Cole had an ugly at bat this last time up. Ben Thomas due up next. A single will do nicely right here. 
And he stays alive by following that one away. Coach Johnson has Ronan Bates on the bench who could pinch hit for Cole and play second base. Wind up in the pitch, follows that one away. Cole Glassburn hitting a 206 coming into this week, 341 on base percentage, however. Runner on first, one out, that pitch inside and the throw up, not in time. Or Actually, the catcher held on to it, thought about throwing up as nearly lost it, and I think there was a brief thought of taking off by Seymour. The one, two, and this is up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the shortstop, throw to second for one, that's all we'll get. Glassburn reaches on the six to four force out, two away, Ben Thomas will step in. Will Johnson put Cole Glassburn in motion? That pitch low, 1 0. Oh. Look good to me. Uh, I believe there's a skunk in the neighborhood. Hmm. That's going to get by the catcher and allow Glassburn to advance to second. Wild pitch there. That does the trick. Puts Colt Glassburn in scoring position. With a timely hit here by Ben Thomas. Hmm. Ben Thomas is one for two today with a walk. Hmm. Pepe Le Pew. Ooh. That pitch up high. Three and oh. That will be a discussion between the catcher and pitcher as Roma comes out. Also we'll have a visit from the assistant coach for Lowell. How did the uh, how did Lowell score those two runs in the last inning? If you recall, because I don't recall, I just lost track. Well the inning started off with a pair of singles. And then uh, Johnny Donovan hit by a pitch. Zach Gishier walked. Harrison Silva then struck out. And then uh, Joey Sanchez would end up uh, having an RBI fielder's choice. Fielder's it? choice. Yep. Ooh. One of the runs scored on the uh, walk uh, to Gishier that drove in a run. Wind up in the pitch. That's fouled away. Ben Thomas is going to try and walk on at University of Massachusetts. Amherst. Go to their fall tryouts. That'd be really something to get into a D1 program. At the very least, he can play high-level club ball. The pitch is up high, and Thomas draws the walk. That'll bring up John Pesson. Two on, two outs. Wind up in the pitch. Outside, one and oh. Eugene set to deliver. Swing and a miss. Little change up. It's actually uh, Ronan Bates in there now. Pitch hitting for John Passon. Indeed.
Ronan played club ball at University of Massachusetts Lowell. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that is going to be out number three. And we remain tied at two as we head to the seventh here in Lowell. You are tuned in to Ashton Legion Playoff Baseball on HCAM and WACA TV. Moving right along to the top of the seventh inning, Tom Cavanaugh remains in the game as Ray Velasquez steps in. First pitch of ball. 1 0. I think first sign of trouble for Cavanaugh. He probably will get the hook. <laughs> 1 and 1. Shane Larry heating up in the bullpen. So three, four, and five hitters for Lowell. Pitch just outside, two and one. Coach Johnson is a pretty good tactical manager, but Tom Cavanaugh is throwing a lot of pitches. He's probably close to his limit, 105. Another ball there, three and one. This is hit high in the air over to left center and backing up to make the catch is Hornung. One away. Took that ball right out of Brad Seymour's glove. I'll bring up Anderson Jimenez, a shortstop. Wind up and the pitch. Bunt pulled back. Now, why would the four hitter be bunting? Not hmm. sure about that one. Just to get someone on base, I guess. Another inside pitch, 2 and 0. Oh. Dominic doesn't want to groove one, but he doesn't want to walk one. Leg lift and the pitch. That's hit foul. Is it in play? No. Two and one. Jewett made the effort to run over to the fence to see if he could reach over and grab it. If Kavanaugh can get out of this inning, you have three, four, five for post 77. Wind up and the pitch outside. Three and one. Cavanaugh deals. It's a bunt, and that is foul. Full count. That's the sign he likes and is set to deal. Upstairs, that's a walk. That's going to be it for him. It's got to be. Here comes Coach Johnson to make the change. Signals down to the bullpen. That takes a slow walk out to the mound. It was a good start by Dom Cavanaugh. He was able to work his way out of a number of jams. His he went six and a third. This is unusual, Tom. Gave up five hits and two runs. But we'll have a new pitcher for post 77, and it's going to be Shane Leary. And while he warms up, we'll take a timeout. You're tuning to Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and WACA TV. Shane Leary, the new pitcher. For post 77, comes into the game for Dom Cavanaugh. And he is set to face Thomas Hassett, who hits this one in the air over to left field. 
And ranging over to make the catch is Dom Cavanaugh. John, Dom Cavanaugh, yeah, who took over in left field. Looked like he overran that ball a little bit. It's a little scary. That was certainly a nice catch. Leary came in last night, took him a little bit to get going, walked a couple of guys, and then was able to get the final out. Two outs in the inning as Kyle DeRoma steps in. Line up and the pitch. I think that was a strike. I believe so. There was barely a signal on that one. I'm surprised the coaches haven't complained. Maybe they hear something we don't. A little ridiculous. That one hit the batter. Two on, two outs. I think Shane's going to make it interesting two nights in a row. Yesterday inherited runners. Coming up now, it'll be Johnny Donovan, or excuse me, the uh, third pitcher of the day for Lowell, uh, Sean Nugent. That one mm, inside, almost hit him in the head. 1-0. Larry, he's certainly not used to uh, coming in the game in relief, so. A little different for him. And that pitch is going to get away from the catcher. He's got to cover Both the plate. Runners are going to, to advance. Plate. And the lead runner is going to stop at third. Well, a rough go at it so far for Larry. Got an easy out, but not so smooth after that. Right there was a brain oopsie. That runner could have scored all the way from second base. Got to field your position no matter how... Dicey things get on the mound. Jake Obit and Sean Jewett with some words of wisdom for Shane Larry. Wind up in the pitch outside. We're tied at two here in the top of the seventh, but a little threatening. Two on, two outs, both runners in scoring position. And that pitch is going to get away from Jewett, and the go-ahead run comes around for Lowell. Three to two is the score to Roma up to third. Lowell leads three to two now. First goes Nugent, it was a walk. So Gishier will step in the batter's box. You think they'll send Nugent, try and get two runs in scoring position? They might, the way things are going. As the righty awaits the pitch, and therefore a strike. Gilchia didn't like that. Well, you're gonna need to get the bats going in the bottom of the seventh now for sure. Larry Deals, inside, that one gets away and another run comes around. Things starting to get ugly here in Lowell. Second wild pitch that allows a run from Shane Larry. And game five looking more and more like a reality. We got only one out, Tom. Two outs in the no, inning, two, two runs in. Another wild pitch. Unbelievable, Larry's just really struggling out there. And if you're Coach Johnson, you gotta get somebody warming up now. Third wild pitch. Just to throw this strikes. outing. Two of those wild pitches allowed scores, uh, allowed runs. Actually, it's the fourth wild pitch, really. He's got the number yeah. eight hitter here. He's got to throw strikes. 
We're going to see a new pitcher. Ben Fink is going to come in for Shane Larry. Larry came in in relief, got an easy out, but then struggled after that. Two more runs have scored. And it's a 4-2 Lowell lead here in the top of the seventh. We'll take a timeout on HKM and WACA TV. Ben Fink in to relieve Shane Larry, who came in in relief of Dom Cavanaugh, but struggled. Swing and a miss by Gishier. Two more runs have scored for Lowell, both on wild pitches. And it's a 4-2 Lowell lead now with two outs. Runner still on third. Wind up in the pitch from Fink, and that one's fought off. Excuse me. Gilchey didn't mean to do that. Yeah, a little inside and ended up hitting his bat for a foul ball. At this point, anything helps if you're post 77. 0 and 2 count. Fink set to deliver. Outside, and that one's going to get away from Jewett. Fink's going to cover home plate, but no throw, and another run scores. Not sure what they were calling for a breaking pitch in that situation. A three-run inning for Lowell, and it's 5-2. to two. Well, pretty impressive stuff for Lowell. They defeated Medford to get to the stage, and now things looking good here in the seventh. That's fouled away. Well, it will not be a walk in the park to the state tournament. Certainly won't. Inside, and that's going to get away, and the batter's going to take off and head over to first. And that hit him? No, I think it was ball four. Would have been dead ball. All right, must have had the count wrong. Is yeah, it? well, it's not your fault. Harrison Silva will step in. Well, you got to get this out and try to get the bats going. Another inside pitch. I don't know what's with the inside stuff tonight. Another inside pitch. Were they just trying to hit batters at this point? No, I don't think there's any stuff like that going on, but we gotta call our weather department and see what the weather is for Ashland tomorrow. And this is driven up the left side foul. Roll bench, certainly uh, feeling it. They get an, another pitcher warming up down there. It'd be a tall task to get three runs. Fouled away. Two and two. HKM Weather says it's going to be raining in a thunderstorm. High humidity. Yeah, I don't know about tomorrow. Line up in the pitch. That's fouled away. And not sure the location tomorrow. Could be actually at Ashland Middle School. They don't have lights. Well, Ashland Middle School doesn't have lights. And nobody has lights. Well, it'll only be one game tomorrow. This is ripped up the left side, but gloved by Rossi at third. Throw to first, and they finally get the third out of the top of the seventh. But three runs score for Lowell. It's 5-2. to two. Lowell leading Ashland as we head to the bottom of the seventh on HKM and WACA TV. Bottom of the seventh inning, Ashland post 77 down to their final three outs. Words we have not had to say much this season at all. As Jackson Hornung steps in, Jackson Hornung, Dom Cavanaugh, Lewis Rossi do up to face Sean Nugent, who remains in the game in relief. That pitch down low, 1 0. Well, Lowell scored three runs on the top of the inning due to some ugly pitching. Well, Jackson Horney cannot win the game with a one-run homer. 
Three wild pitches. Allowed runs the score on three different occasions. Wind up and the pitch. It's fouled away. Is it catchable? No. Good hustle. Wanda, that was on you. Well, on a good note, if Fashlin can't somehow come back in this game, they will uh, get another opportunity to take down Lowell tomorrow at a place and time to be determined. Wind up and the pitch outside. But with the weather not looking so great tomorrow, we'll see if we're able to get the game in. Let me give you the bad news. That was called a strike. <laughs> I give up at this point. I don't blame you, bud. That one low. Catcher peeling down to the infield ump to see if Horning went around. Up the left side, gloved by the third baseman, throw to first, one away. Tom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, will step in. Rolled by Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. Tom Cavanaugh started the game as the pitcher, and then moved over to left field. John Pesson came out of the game. First pitch looked inside. I think you called it a strike, though. Terrible signal by the home plate umpire. I believe that one was a ball, one and one. Looks like there's some rain, according to my radar, right over our heads. Well, we'll get out of here fast tonight. One and two. Let's see, we'll see what kind of good sports Lowell are should they win this game. Well, we'll have to see about that one. There's a ball, two and two. Lewis Rossi on deck. And this is foul. What does it say in left center? 385? 365. I just noticed it. 365. That's a pretty good yak. 380 to right here. 365 to left center. Direct center field doesn't really have a measurement on it. Well, it looks a lot up far to me. Pitch a ball, I believe. Oh, that was definitely a ball. And it's a walk. Ashland has some life. Rossi stepping in. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Well, I heard that. Uh, Martinez hit a home run for the Red Sox down in Baltimore. If that's any consolation. And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught two away. Sean Drew at the catcher will step in. Well, it's a tough loss to take if you're Ashlyn, as they'll most likely fall here. But you got another 
game to try to clinch a spot in the state title. And they'll certainly try to take advantage of that tomorrow, weather pending. That pitch outside. No, don't think so. <laughs> Hopefully this, tomorrow. I got, I got to say, though, this home plate umpire is awful. He should be signaling much better than he is. If you're going to be that enthusiastic, then don't do this job. It really is quite bizarre. He's getting paid big bucks. He's not going to make a millionaire as a result of it, but. Well, if you're going to do this job, at least make the strike call. Don't just wave your hand and people can't tell what you're doing. A little ridiculous. Roll five runs, six hits today. They've committed two errors. Post 77 scored two runs and two hits, and that is out number three. Lowell walks away with the five to two victory. We will play on to game five. The next game, the winner of Lowell and Ashland will advance to the state tournament. It now turns into a best of one series. The final score for the final time, Lowell defeats Ashland by a final score of five to two. For my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. And we thank you for tuning in to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, as well as HCAT in Holliston. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.